Hi there, in this video we're going to go through a program. So we're going to load the program and then we're going to execute the program. Now, I've called this the CPU, but remember the RAM's actually inside it, so the RAM actually should be sitting outside it, okay, because the RAM wouldn't be inside the, the CPU. But um, that's how it's built, and at some point I'll probably will take it out, okay. You could maybe even just replace that or change that from CPU to computer. Now, let's see if I want to um, go through and load the data in now what I have to do is I have to set the load high okay then I have to reset everything so all the registers everything gets reset and everything's zero anyway but that resets everything with inside that CPU all, all the everything that has to has a set point on it all gets reset now physically place the memory address register set high. Now I can get in here and I if I again I can go into edit contents and I can open up and again this is a 256 bytes okay and it's uh, in hex okay so I can get in and open up the file that was a file that I, I generate automatically from the assembler which is written in Excel well, I'm open up the file so you can see that it says loaded in the code okay and the CF is the end code instruction which I created okay so I close that window that's everything sitting here now what I want to do is I want to whenever I run the clock it will automatically load that into the CPU okay so again this last week it was running a lot faster this would run in about you know a couple of seconds, but now it takes about 30 seconds for it to run in. But I'll, I'll run it anyway, and it means you can see it running through everything happening within the CPU. So if I go tick enabled, okay, so that's it running through, and it's loading up the code, and you'll be able to see it loading up the code if I actually get into the CPU there, and you'll see it running along here at some point. You'll see the code coming in. There you go. That's it. So that's the. Um, in fact, that was the last bit. Uh, last byte was byte number 22. But we'll continue along here and I'll just load in all the rest of, with zeros. Okay? So now you can see the, the vertical line running along. Okay? So it's picking each individual uh, memory cell and the horizontal line. So that horizontal line, uh, once it's picked, worked along 16. This will move down on the next line and then it'll count along another 16 vertically and the horizontal will drop down. There it goes, okay. So you can see that working quite nicely. So if I go back to the top level, now we'll know it's finished because we'll go up to the bus gets to um, FF, okay. And in here there is a, a little counter, so that's counting the values into this RAM okay and if I go to the v, the CPU, um there's another counter here and that counter is running at the same speed it's on off the same clock and it is counting through and loading the it's counting through the memory address register and counting and loading uh, all the data in via the memory address register so memory address register is just counting up you can see it counting up there okay as these change to green and if we get into the memory address register we see the memory address register counting up okay so that's run for that clock okay so it's just about finished and once it's finished we'll, we'll actually run the code now we won't run the code to the very end because it's running really slowly now it may take about 30 seconds to run but now it seems to be taking about five minutes um, so when this goes to ff that's us run the whole um, program in Okay, so the clock still run away here, so I can stop the clock just by choosing that. Okay, now we have to be careful where it stops because this clock it really could stop in any condition. Okay, so for example, it could stop in that condition where all three are high. Okay, or, or when clock set is low, or all three are low. But in order to set it up properly i have to be careful with this i have to make sure that i leave this in the right position okay so the right position is 
a 0, a 1 and a 0. Now if I put it in any other position, it means that potentially when you go to restart, um, you restart not from the beginning of a clock pulse, but you're actually part of the way through it, okay? Because I've got four of these clock pulses and I have to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm starting at the right point here. So I put that back as a matter of course to that 0, 1, 0. Now what I can do is I can take that memory address register set off, I can take the load off, now that's the CPU loaded up, okay, so that the RAM's loaded up, ready to run the program, okay, so you can see that if I get into the RAM, there you go, so there's the RAM, it's got all the codes in there, okay, so that's, that's all the instructions to multiply the two numbers together. So, for example, the first one there is the date instruction. The next one there is the actual number, which is 5. The next one there is a date instruction. And the next and the number there is 5. So it's multiplying 5 by 5. And this is the rest of the code that, that does it. So if I get into CPU test and we start running it, so we just go simulate and tick enable. So this is us actually running through the code. Okay, so that's the value that's on the bus. That's the accumulator running through there, okay, and the, all the other registers, the instruction address register and the instruction register, and the uh, for values, so you see it's actually read the values 5 and 5, so we're multiplying these two together, and we're going to place the answer there. Now, the answer to 5 times 5 is 25, which is 1, 9 in hex, so eventually there'll be a 1, 9 placed in here, okay, and after it gets a 1, 9, it's still multiply together all the other higher order zeros until it gets to the end but I'll, i won't keep it till that that point because it's going to take about at least a minute for it to just to do the, the two numbers okay so in that time we can go back in here and we can actually see we get the cpu it's nice to see i deliberately built that bus all the way around so we could see it all changing color yeah so that you know there is actually something happening now the control section here Again, the control section, you can see it counting along the control section. Okay, now last week when I was running this, you couldn't even see that, it was just running so fast, you hardly seen anything. But I suppose it's good you can see it counting individually, and you can see that it'll be setting and resetting and enable these outputs. You see these outputs just changing just quickly, see that and just. Tweeting, so that's them just changing, and I see again with the enables. You can see the enables just flicking on and off in perfect unison, perfect timing. Now, there is a, this little section here which is an 8 input and gate, and whenever the code, the whole thing is finished, it will produce a little signal there at end. Okay, and what I'll do is in the top level, it'll turn that little circle red. Okay, so um. That's all I've just said there on that. Um, let's see what else there is. Now this should change really within the next few seconds. It will change. Now there it goes. One nine. Okay, so so it does actually work. That is the answer. Okay. Now if I could leave this running for another couple of minutes, it would just come to the end. That would turn red, and we would have our answer. Okay. So that just shows you the the CPU does work. Okay. So um, I'll stop this simulate and well in fact we could have a quick look inside again see if there's anything else we want to have a look at there there's the ALU and run away there as well okay and CPU test let's see uh, again, these are just individual registers uh, you've seen everything there. these are registers as well so the interesting sections in the control section and the RAM and in the ALU. So that's all there is, and uh, thank you for listening. Okay, uh, goodbye.